So this finished object, I actually started in 2022. It's been almost two years in the making. Hello, my name is Emily Crow from The Cozy Crow and welcome to my YouTube channel and welcome to episode 41 of the Crochet and Knitting podcast. You're in luck today because I've got both knitting and crochet. I've kind of gotten a little bit more into crochet again recently and had a couple fun projects. So I'm excited to share with you all the things that I've been working on in the knitting and crochet realm. What I'm wearing today, I'm wearing my love note that I knit a few years ago as part of my love note is in the air knit along that I did with my friend Jessica of JS Threads who I will mention in a little bit. I use Knit Picks yarn, I use Palette, which is a fingering weight base in the color Sagebrush, I think. And then I held it with a loft which is their mohair base in the color, I'm pulling this out, out of my brain, in the color, in the color, I looked it up, oh, in the color, in the color, in the color, iceberg, but it's definitely more of a minty green. I love the color of this. This is really fun to knit. I really enjoyed it. I've knit a couple for my daughter too. It's been a while since I've made one. Maybe I'll make another. I'm wearing a half tee underneath this. I've got like regular sleeves on this and it stops just underneath my chest. It's on my rib cage. So it's just like half of a tee. I really like it because it's really lightweight. It helps me maintain the modesty that I want while still wearing things that have like lace on it. Cause honestly, like you have to wear something underneath this because of how far the lace goes down. And I like the half tee because you can't even really tell. And I got it in a nude color. So it kind of blends in and you can just kind of see the lace detail. I'll link half tea down below. I really like wearing them, especially with my hand knits. And if the mohair kind of like itches under my arm a little bit, the sleeved versions, they have different lengths, but this is just like a regular t-shirt tee. The sleeve version works really great for me to cover that really sensitive part of my upper arm that tends to get like itchy or uncomfortable with mohair. The rest of me is fine, but for some reason right there is really sensitive. So I like wearing the tee. I like having a half tee so that I don't have all this extra fabric on my abdomen and I can get kind of like more of a cool breeze, but I can also stay modest. So love that. I've got a couple finished objects to share with you. First, let's talk about one I do not have with me anymore. This is my Evie Amigurumi that I made using the free pattern on 1UP Crochet's website. And oh, it turned out so, so cute. I made this Amigurumi in like three days because I was running out of time, realized that a baby shower gift that I had ordered would not be getting there in time for the actual baby shower. And so I figured I would make something that I thought would be meaningful to my sister-in-law and brother-in-law. And I found this pattern and it was so, so cute. I worked on it a lot and I finished it while I was at work on a night shift, just brushing out the little collar of it. So I have a picture. It's not the best picture because I took it at the hospital that night. And then the very next morning I took a really quick nap and then went to the baby shower. It is a free pattern. So I definitely recommend it. I've heard of one up crochet before and I know they have lots of patterns available. So make sure to check out their site. And that was really fun to get into. I always forget that even though Amigurumi has lots of moving parts and lots of things to sew together, it actually works up really quick because crochet in general works up a faster fabric than knitting and with all the little pieces, it feels like you reach the next checkpoints in your pattern following really quickly as you're making different pieces. Really easy to take on the go, just have the pattern on your phone or something and like make an ear while you're out and about. It was just a fun reminder. I had a lot of fun making this pattern and I bought one of those like slicker brushes that they use for like curly haired dogs so that I could get the fluff up on this Evie and it turned out really, really cute. And I want to make some more Amigurumi soon. Not sure what, I think it would be fun to make something for my daughter, maybe some more play food or something. I have an idea of something I'd wanna make my daughter. I just need to like sit down and start it, I think. My other two finished objects. This one is a test crochet project that I was doing for my friend Jessica of JS Threads. It is finished the floret shawl. I'm trying to figure out the best way to show it. Oh, beautiful. Ah! It's a great size for a shawl, not too big, not too small and hard to kind of wrap around and wear. Honestly, the perfect size, super cute. I feel really cute. And you can see this beautiful like lace pattern. Oh, it's just stunning. I use a lot of uh, 
mini, it's a mini skein set, but each of the skeins had like 30 to 35 grams. So a little bit bigger than traditional minis, but there was this smooth sailing gradient set from marinated yarns that I had purchased at a local yarn store to me not too long ago, maybe last year. I think it might've been during the Utah yarn crawl. And so I used that for this shawl, plus a couple extra random like variegated yarns that kind of fit in with the teal. The estimate for how much yarn I would use for the shawl was a little bit generous, which is great, better than not having enough yarn, but I was worried I would run out. And so I added in these extra mini skeins, which are not my favorite. I wish I could have just used the smooth sailing gradient set. In retrospect, it did all of the weighing out of how much it weighed. It was coming really close. So I think it was a good decision to add in the other couple variegated mini skeins in here, but Mm, but it wasn't what I was hoping to do when I picked to use this gradient set, but I think it worked out for the best because I didn't run out of yarn. I have a little bit left over of a couple colors in the gradient set and I was able to use up some minis from my stash as well. So that was satisfying. It is crochet. It uses a moss stitch pattern, which is really fun. Whenever I faded between colors. I just did two rows in one color and two rows in the other color and just alternated up the side. You can't even see it now because this is the side that I alternated my skeins on and so I've already crocheted over that edge. It was a pretty clean transition to do that but adding the lace texture on also kind of like covered up any kind of discrepancy, if that makes sense. I absolutely love this lace detail and this was such a fun shawl to work on. It was so easy, so mindless. I love a moss stitch for crochet. I hope that Jess had a really good pattern release. I'll link it down below if you are interested in getting it for yourself. You start at the big side. It doesn't look like a shawl for a while. But as you continue on, it gets shorter and shorter, so it goes faster and faster. It's a really fun meditative stitch, not hard to do. And this lace got pretty intuitive as I was doing it. And then it also went really quickly because it's only maybe like six rows or something. Like it's not, it's not a lot. It's not super time consuming. Definitely worked out really fast. I'm having a really hard time talking today. I don't know like if my brain is just elsewhere or what's going on. My last finished object is one that has been a whip for almost two years. Yes, almost two years. So it's really exciting that this is done. I don't know why I was just craving an easy vanilla pattern. And I remembered that I had this sock just hanging around a tube sock that I wanted to work on. I started it two summers ago when we were going on a trip and I was just working on it maybe like that spring and I brought it with me on our trip. We did a road trip out to Utah when we were living in California to visit some family and do some fun stuff and I thought this would be a good like portable project to bring and so I was working on it a little bit then. It hasn't gotten a lot of love until recently. I took it with me to like watch a movie or something. I realized I did like 30 or 40 rounds and I did the math, figured out how many rounds I wanted to make before I finished off this too. And I was already like more than halfway done. And so I had that in the back of my mind. And when I needed a vanilla project to work on, I just grabbed this tube and I worked on knitting it and finished it in like a week and a half. It was so easy to throw in my bag for work or bring with me if I was waiting somewhere or just have something super mindless that I could just knit on and not have to worry because I had like 70 more rounds to go. <laughs> so let me show you these socks. Ah, ah, you can tell I've got a color palette. You can tell that I am like a mint, pale blue kind of person. I like all kind of like pastel-y colors. And oh, I love these socks, they're so pretty. This yarn is from Backcountry Knitter in the color Texas Skies. No, Texas Sky, singular, Texas Sky and robin eggs. So pretty. So the way I made these socks, I knit one cuff and then I put it on like scrap tubing to keep those stitches live so I could kitchen it later. And then I started another cuff and I knit stockinette for like 200 rounds, not even kidding, to get both socks. And then I finished off that tube with a toe, but it was a super long sock looking thing. It was kind of funny. And so I had a toe done. I had two cuffs and like all of the like stock in it done. I cut into the sock tube to split the socks in half. 
So I had one cuff leg foot technically and one leg foot toe. So then I kitchenered the top of my cuffless sock to the cuff I knit way long ago. So I kitchenered that together and then I added a toe onto my toeless sock and then they were both ready for heels. I did an afterthought heel based on a couple other short row heel socks that I've done and kind of where the sock was falling on my foot. I kind of guesstimated how big to make the foot. And I also wanted to try making a slightly deeper afterthought heel just because of the way my heel shaped to make sure that this heel didn't slide down into my foot. So I made the foot slightly longer than I have in the past. And I also added like, I think two rounds of just going around in this heel before I started decreasing just so that I could hopefully have a slightly deeper heel. So I haven't worn these a ton. I'll have to give them a good try. I just wanted to show them while they were freshly blocked and I'm super happy with how they turned out. The reason I didn't start with a cuff and end with a cuff is because I, I didn't want to have my cast on for one cuff and then a bind off for the other because I wanted them to be able to match visually. And they do because I use the same technique for both of these cuffs. So that's my main reason for doing that. Though it was a little bit annoying it was a little bit annoying to like kitchener it together, especially to like get the tension right. And I think I did a pretty good job, but I definitely had to pull at it. And I can tell that this is the sock that I had to kitchener because the tension's not perfect, though I think I did a pretty good job. So I'm trying to think of like what I would do differently if I did this again. I would try to knit this in a shorter span of time because there were a few different points along my sock tube where I'd put the sock down for months at a time, picked it back up, and then I started knitting again and my gauge was a little bit different. So there was like a line of tension difference that I could feel, I could see it. Maybe I'm just very particular, but like I could tell where I put it down and then picked it up again at a later point. So if I could do it more like consistently, that would be great. Other than that, I think just not having to kitchener the cuff back on, but I don't know how I would fix that. I would have to kind of think about what I would want to do different because honestly, it turned out pretty dang good. But having an afterthought heel is not my favorite to wear. So I'm not sure if there's a good way to do a sock tube while also doing like a cancel up gusset. I feel like not, but who knows? Maybe I'll look into that and see if there are other ways to do a sock tube. This was definitely, I feel like one of the more clear cut ways to do it, but maybe there are more interesting ways to accomplish a similar task. Really glad to have these done and off my plate after so long. And they're so cute. I'm excited to wear them. Let's talk about my whips. I haven't been knitting as much recently. Work's been a little bit intense as things have been kind of shifting with my job. Also, I've been doing a lot of reading, which has been fun, though mostly audiobooks, but I've still had to like kind of shift around my time of like what I'm working on. Working on some taxes this month, which has not been the funnest. And also trying to like reorganize, do some spring cleaning around the house and like reorganizing my daughter's toys where I'm trying to put a bunch into rotation so that we can kind of tidy things up and have fewer toys around at all times kind of thing. So there's just like a lot going on and nothing super like significant or meaningful. Just like I'm in a busy season of my life and knitting has not been like scratching the itch that I want when I need to decompress reading has been doing that a little bit more for me because I can kind of disconnect from my phone a little bit. I'm not like watching YouTube while I'm doing knitting. This is a change that's kind of evolving over the past like year or two that I am not watching as much YouTube while I knit, but I'm choosing to read instead. But I have four whips to share with you. I think half of them are things that you've not seen and two of them are things that have been around for a while that it's been good to put a little bit of work into. Though it would be kind of fun to cast on a new project or two for the tip that we have coming up soon. My first whip to share with you is the Grove Shawl Light by Sarah Opie. Trying to turn this around. Okay, ta-da! Oh my gosh, beautiful. I love these colors. I'm so excited. This will be really fun to wear. Pinks and greens, mm, I love it. I have a little cookie marker I made myself not too long ago. That's where I was at last time I shared this, which was a couple months ago. Like I think I put it down early January and haven't worked on it since then really. So I have a marker right there. I finished striping in the dark greenish 
variegated color. And now I'm in the middle of just mint green. I had some modules to do for work that I was finishing up and this is really nice. It's mostly garter stitch with some I-cord edging and some increasing for shaping. It's pretty simple to do. So it was really good to do while I had modules going on the computer at my work. And so that was really nice that I got to like have some knitting to work on while I was doing that. So I spent a couple night shifts putting in some time, made some good progress. I've definitely got more to do. This would be a good travel project just because it's pretty simple and easy to take on the go, pick up, put down kind of thing. I would hope to get to the next color by the next podcast, maybe. That would be really fun to share. So it goes from color one, fade to two, fade to three, fade to four, and then fades back to three, to two, and then to one. So I'm getting towards the halfway point of this shawl. I do think I'll have some yarn left over, which would be great because I adore these colors. This is the through the worn, this is the through the wardrobe. Oh my gosh, I can't talk. This is the Through the Wardrobe Yarn Co's Sunday countdown calendar advent type of thing for December. So every week you would open one skein from this advent. It was a very bookish Christmas, I think. And so it came with a book, a couple little goodies, and these four skeins of yarn. And oh, they just look so good together. So let's see. I think this one is... Why is my brain not working? Let me refresh. This one's called Fireside. This one is called Spiced Chai. This one is called Christmas Tree Farm. And this one's called Comfort Read. So this is the fourth color I've not introduced yet into my shawl. I'm excited to like keep working on this, but I'm not in any hurry. Just kind of enjoying having something mindless to work on that's working up in some beautiful colors. And I'm not like super compelled to like work on it for a long time. I pick it up, work on it for a little bit, get bored, put it down, do something else, and that's working for me. This next section, I'm going to keep a little bit mysterious and it's gonna be grayed out because I am talking about my Astrid blanket from Mallory Crawl. This is a crochet pattern. I've modified the squares to include four colors in the base square, and then there'll be a fifth color that goes around to join all the squares together. And I'm doing this project for Wolbury Fiber Co's Book Society boxes. I have a subscription, so I'm doing every season a box. I already showed you the winter colors. I have a vlog that I'll link up above and down below if you are interested in watching that vlog from December. And I'm working on a vlog for the spring box which came in and I want these colors to be a secret so that you can go check out that vlog when it comes out. It should be pretty soon because I've already finished filming it but I kind of wanted to share with you a little bit on like what I'm doing. So I am using the four colors included in this box. So this book society box is really cool. You have four different skeins of yarn, a few goodies, and a book in this package. So you get to, you know, have fun with all the little goodies. And for the book, as you're reading, you'll read certain page numbers that are labeled on the yarns. When you reach the page number indicated on a skein of yarn, you'll open that skein and it's related to what's happening on the page. And it's just super fun to be able to like read a book and open some yarn and have them working in tandem with one another. The spring box was Vera Wong's Unsolicited Advice for Murderers, which I hadn't read yet, which is really fun that I got to read a new to me book. And it was a fun book. My big review of it is definitely going to be in that vlog that I am working on. I'll also make sure to post a little bit of a review in my video where I talk about all the books that I read in March and what I may read in April as like a little teaser. So keep an eye out for both of those videos that are coming up to talk more about that book. But for these skeins of yarn, and again, this is going to be grayed out so that I don't spoil the colors of someone still reading this book and working their way slowly through it. But I'm rotating through all four of these colors to make four different configurations of this Astro Blanket square. Once I've used up all the yarn to make all these squares, I'm going to use all four boxes squares and mix them all together into a big blanket. I'm super excited for this project. And here is a little sneak peek on what the squares look like. <gasps> Ta -da! I'm gonna try to share with you a little bit of the texture. So this is the texture of the Astrid blanket squares. I added another round of puff stitches in order to be able to use all four colors in the base square. And then I'll use a fifth color, like I said, to join all the squares together in probably a totally random pattern. I don't really want to have all the spring squares together and all of the winter squares together and you know, things like that. I kind of want to just have it intermixed a little bit and kind of see how I like that. But yeah, they're all a little bit different. I tried to keep the order of the colors the same. So I have like one, two, three, four, two, three, four, one, three, four, one, two, kind of like that. So I have four different configurations. 
just to try to use up the yarn equally across the board so I'm not stuck with like 20 grams of one color and like I've already run out of one of the other colors just to kind of keep it even as close as possible. So uh, I'm really excited. I have not really worked on the winter box squares at all since my last vlog. It's been a few months. It just hasn't been a priority. I think I may work on a vlog where all I do is try to see how many squares I can get done in a given amount of time and kind of like time myself to like a timed crochet challenge. So if you're interested in that kind of a vlog to kind of help me push through some of this yarn and make sure that I can make more squares before the summer box comes in a few months, then let me know down below if that's something you're interested in. I don't wanna ruin the colors for you, again, if you're still working on the box, but make sure to check out my vlog. They'll be coming up soon, so you can check out the actual yarn, what its names are based off of the book, and what the colors look like. These next two whips are ones that I've not shown before, which is really exciting. One of them is a test knit, and uh, it's turning out so beautifully. Like, I am so excited. This is like the spring vibes that I was hoping for. This is a perfect match between the yarn and the pattern like it's just making me so happy so this shawl test is for Ashley Rainey well she got married recently so I'm not sure if Rainey is still her last name but Ashley of Goose and Ghost Knit she's got a podcast here on YouTube as well and this shawl is called the Skagit Valley shawl and it's based off of like wildflowers it's this really cool texture I think it needs a good block for sure because it's definitely got some rolling and edges and stuff but let's see if I can show you look at that beautiful texture it's just like so fun with the lace and this like cluster stitch is really fun how it's all grouped together i just finished a section of stockinette and now i'm moving on to another section of this like lace texture bit so it'll be really fun to get into that this yarn is from yarnaceous fibers and it is the great basin spring colorway it came in a sock set you could buy them separately but i bought the sock set which is perfect this shawl is intended to be used with a sock set of yarn so here's the little mini this beautiful like purpley color and this is the main skein great basin spring so beautiful i love these speckles and it's just like a creamy pinky variegated base with all these fun colored speckles in it. I love this color. It makes me so happy. I bought this last year at the Great Basin Fiber Arts Fair, which is in, oh, is it Farmington, Utah? There's like an event center up there. So I went there, I have a vlog. I'll make sure to link it up above so you can watch it. I bought myself this yarn there because it was exclusive at the time to that event. And it just was so beautiful. The kind of yarn that I love. And I think it would be really fun to have this finished and be able to wear it to this upcoming Great Basin Fiber Arts Fair, which is coming up in just a, like a month or so. Yeah, it's at the end of April. So I've got plenty of time. This pattern comes out, I think, April 17th, maybe, or April 20th, somewhere around there. So I should have it done in time to have it like blocked and looking beautiful and ready to go for the Great Basin Fiber Arts Fair, and I think Maggie of Yarnaceous Fibers will be there, and so I can share my project in person with her. She's also testing the same pattern, which is super funny because I was like, I think I'm gonna use this yarn, and Maggie's like, I'm biased, but I love it, and I was like, oops, I did not know you were in this group. <laughs> It was super funny. And so it'll be fun to share with her what I've made from her yarn in person. It'll be really cool. I'm really excited for that. It's been a fun project with a lot of really cool textures, but then big swaths of stockinette, which is just fun to work on. My last whip to share with you is one that I just like wanted to cast on something different and something fun. And I am going to cast on a sock from Summer Lee's new pattern book for another vlog that I'm doing where I'm reviewing a fiber arts related book and I'm gonna make a pattern to go with it. So I'm picking a sock pattern from that book. And while I was like waiting to figure out what pattern I wanted to make, kind of looking through my stash, asking on Instagram and my Discord for my book club, link down below, I just wanted to cast something on. So I used some yarn that I had wound up long time ago intending to use and I just hadn't gotten around to. And so I cast on a vanilla sock in the meantime while I was still trying to figure out what to do for that sock that I want to cast on to. This is my sock so far. Uh-oh. Holy ends, Batman. I don't know how well you can see, but it's got this sparkle. It's definitely harder to see than I thought it would be on camera. Maybe that's just like my angle. I'm having a hard time seeing. This is a sparkle base. This yarn is from Ruby and Roses in their rose gold base. The color is called 
Castle by Day sock set with this beautiful like rosy color and the cream. I wanted to use this whole sock set together. This was part of a make along that Nitty Nighty hosted a couple Christmases ago. I can't remember what she used to call it because she didn't do it this past year. So I bought it then because it was just really fun. And this is like kind of zany, like a little bit outside of my comfort zone. But I just wanted some fun zany socks. So this is how it's looking. I did two by two rim for the cuff and I alternated to kind of give like an athletic stripe type of look between the two contrast minis. And then I'm gonna use, I think the rose color for the heel and then white for the toe. Cause I feel like I'm less likely to get the toe dirty compared to the heel based on like walking on it is like, I don't know if that's going to work out, but I do want to use both. That's my plan. And then this main color, so colorful, so pretty. To get these stripes looking really nice, I actually used a tip that I've used in the past, but Summer includes it in her book, where on the first round of the new color when you're doing stripes in ribbing, you just knit all the way across and this converts all your purled stitches back to knits so that when you start ribbing again, those purled stitches are now in your new color as a knit stitch and so they won't have like a random purl bump show up. So you can kind of see on the opposite side, the wrong side you get like purl bumps not get the purl bumps you just knit a whole round in the new color and then you can continue your ribbing texture for the rest of that stripe so just the first round of each new stripe will be knits and it's so seamless like you can't even really tell that i have random knit rounds in between it just makes those stripes look really nice it's nice to have another vanilla sock on the needle i'm actually doing a 60 stitch count sock because i think i'm finding that i like that fit better on my foot we are trying it out some more and experimenting a little. This cuff is a little bit taller than normal, but I didn't want to end on like a white stripe. I wanted to end on a like mauve rose colored stripe. So I just kind of mixed it up. We'll see how long I knit the leg. I got to try it on and kind of see how I like it, especially with the thicker cuff that really stands out. I don't want it to be like a really stumpy looking sock. I'm just kind of like seeing what that turns into. And I'll probably do a heel flap gusset cause that's my favorite type of sock heel. And that's just been like a fun random sock that I cast it on. Cause I had some sock needles lying around and I still have plenty of sock needles that I could be working on that maybe I'll cast something else on. But I think I need a different project, like maybe a hat. It'd be really fun to start working on like a summer garment or even like start working on something for the fall, like a bigger project, like a sweater or something. Cause I don't have any garments on the needles. So it would be kind of fun to get something started cause I have plenty of garment yarn in my stash. <laughs> Other than the Book Society box from Wolverine Fabrico, I don't really have a lot of yarn goodies to share with you. And for that book box, I included it in the video, but let's see if I have anything nearby. I've got these cute needle toppers and I lost one. Actually, I think my cat lost one. He was playing with it and knocking it around. So I don't know if it like rolled somewhere, but they've got these cute like flowers on them, this pretty green color. So that's the only knitting related thing. There's also some tea, there was a mug, there was a pin, which is somewhere over there. I can't remember exactly where I put it and the yarn that came with it and the book, of course. So if you wanna see more about what came in that book box, each box has been a little bit different, but similar vibe going on, then make sure to check out that video. I'll make sure to link it down below and up above once that video comes out. The only other yarn gradient that came in the mail was my Hello Lavender stitch markers. And this was like a build your own set kind of thing where she did this fun like knit stitch texture and had all sorts of different color combinations and all sorts of different items that you could choose from. And so I just did like a random assortment of some fun colors that I liked in various different patterns, honestly. Like there was no rhyme or reason. It's not like I got a set to like match themselves. I just thought it'd be fun to have a sweater, a hat, a sock, and a mitten, all things that I've made and that I hope to make in the future. And I can use these as maybe like my beginning of round marker for certain things. Don't ask me what colors are here because I definitely don't remember, <laughs> but some fun combos. There's like a more cranberry colored one. There's like a coral and red version, there's a gray version, and then there's also this bright green version. So some really fun stitch markers that I'm excited to use on some more pieces. And this texture is just like really fun. It's just mesmerizing to look at these duo-toned knit items in stitch marker form. And that's all. Not a lot to talk about. 
in this section of my podcast. But I'm sure that for April, there's gonna be a lot more since I'm visiting my family in New York and my mom and I are sure to go to a yarn store while we're out there. Would you guys wanna see a vlog of our time visiting in New York? Let me know if you'd want it to be fiber related, maybe like what I work on on a trip, or if you want it to be like a day in the life, like this is what we're up to while we're here in New York visiting my family. Let me know if you wanna see a vlog like that. My vlogs don't do as well as my podcast type videos on this channel, so I'd wanna make the kind of content that you'd be interested in watching so let me know what you want to see if you want to see any kind of vlog based on our trip in New York and it's upstate New York it's not like we're going to the city or anything I grew up like seven hours away from the city I've never been to New York City even though I grew up in New York yes it's true it's like a whole different state honestly <laughs> We are done talking about yarny things, just kind of talking about what's been going on with us. And I kind of mentioned it before, just lots of like homey things, working on the garden a little bit, trying to get things set up so we can maybe plant some things. My husband's got some plants down in the basement. He's been growing with like hydroponics is not like the right word because it's not been like that intense of a system, but he's been kind of like grow lights in our basement and some like watering system to try to like work on these plants and kind of get the sprouts growing before we start a little garden. I definitely want to garden more this year than we did last year. It totally failed because we just didn't have a good habit. So trying to make a point to work on the garden more frequently. So we're working on that, working on doing some decluttering, spring cleaning, etc., etc. I'm feeling the urge to do some cleaning out of stuff. So that's been like a little fun, but also kind of harrowing. I like, I had a little bit of momentum and now I'm kind of in a place where I'm like, okay, now I gotta like really dig in and do the hard stuff. So we'll see how that goes. <laughs> that's been a slow and steady project. And my office is like a huge mess because I've got like bags for organizing and like my closet's open and things are spilling out. It's just like kind of a mess in the middle of doing this project of decluttering and kind of tidying up things in here. I just increased my hours at work, which I'm really excited about, though I haven't really felt the benefit of that as much because it literally just started. So, so I'll talk about it in my next podcast as I've had a few more weeks of going to work a little bit less and how that's kind of impacting my creating time, maybe my designing time. I am feeling the urge to like do a little designing because I've done a lot of pattern tests this year and I haven't done any designs in a little while. I was thinking I might make a few like fun little baby sock designs for like a baby sock knit along and I just like haven't gotten around to it. Hasn't been a priority. Again, working on taxes and bookkeeping and stuff. So there's just, you know, a lot going on. The weather was warming up, which was really nice. We had some snow the other day, which was like less nice, but I hope that it'll warm up again soon maybe we're about to celebrate Easter and I don't have to work on Easter which is nice so I'm working like Friday night and I'm working Monday and Tuesday day I have a little reprieve in the middle of my work schedule to enjoy Easter with my little family and then probably some of my husband's family so I'm excited about that my daughter's been looking forward to Easter for like a month and a half she's like is tomorrow Easter or when I wake up is it Easter she's three it's super funny I'm like no it's in a while but it's fun now that we can say Easter is next week or Easter's on Sunday like she's getting that it's coming up closer so she's getting excited about that and so it'll be fun to do like all the fun secular stuff of like the Easter egg hunt and like Easter basket and maybe making a few fun little treats but then also having the like more sacred part of going to church on Sunday and talking more about what that means for our family and things like that so it'll be fun now that my daughter can interact a lot more with us being three years old it's been more fun to do holidays with her so I'm excited about this Easter let me know if you did anything fun for the Easter holiday or if you have any other holidays coming up for your family that you are enjoying and especially if you have any fun crafts or fiber projects that you are working on related to the spring season. I think that my Skagit or Skagit Valley shawl is really scratching my spring project itch. But we'll see if I decide to cast anything else on. I know that there's a mystery gnome knit along coming up for April from Sarah Shira. I already bought my pattern. I'm really excited. I've loved doing those gnomes. I've got quite a few, a little gaggle up here and we'll see what this year's looks like and if it's going to be kind of spring themed that would be really fun other than that there's not much going on with us and our family but things are going well it's been fun to do some reading it's been fun to do some creating it's been fun to get a few projects off of my needles and hooks and to start a few new things and I'm hoping to like gain some more momentum on some of these projects so that I can really enjoy the process of making them too and not just the product and inching along in my progress 
it would be fun to like knock some of these things out and maybe start some fresh things. We'll see what kind of fresh products I've got for the month of April. Let me know what you're thinking about casting on or what you recently started, and maybe it'll inspire me to make something new too. I've got lots of beautiful yarns here to choose from. I'm just not quite sure like what I'm in the mood to make, but I think something different, like a hat or a garment is what I'm feeling because I've done lots of shawls and I've done lots of socks. So I need something a little bit different. Let me know your recommendations down below. I love chatting with you in my comment section. I really appreciate you. Thank you so much for watching this video and for supporting me on this YouTube channel. And until next time, happy making. Bye.